A former Trinidad and Tobago Attorney General detained by police on allegations of witness tampering. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Tuesday, August 29. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. Anand Ram Logan, who served under the People's Partnership Government, was arrested early Tuesday morning at his home. He's accused of misbehavior in public office and perverting the course of justice. More in this report from Peter Christopher of CNews. The former Attorney General's arrest was confirmed by Attorney General Ramdeen on Tuesday morning. According to reports, at around 6 a.m. today, officers came to Mr. Ram Logan's Palmis Park home in San Fernando to execute a search warrant. Following the search, Ram Logan was taken into police custody and carried to the police administration building. His cellular phone was also seized. It is believed that his arrest is in relation to allegations of perverting the course of justice. In 2015, Ram Logan was asked to resign from the post of attorney, to resign from the post of attorney general after investigation into a witness tampering case was ordered by the acting commissioner of police, Stephen Williams. Then Minister of National Security Guy Griffith was also fired from his post in relation to that matter. It was alleged that Minister Griffith, under instruction from Mr. Ram Logan, called the director of the Police Complaints Authority, David West, concerning a witness statement in a case involving then opposition leader Dr. Keith Browley. Trinidad and Tobago new public utilities minister Robert Le Hunt has had his appointment revoked just four days after taking up the post. The decision by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley to ask President Anthony Camona on Monday to revoke the appointment was taken because Le Hunt, a Trinidadian who worked as a banker in Ghana, is also a citizen of that African nation. He had been sworn into office last Thursday as a senator and minister. But under Trinidad and Tobago's constitution, his Ghanaian citizenship prevents his Senate appointment. A statement from the office of the Prime Minister said Le Hunt is expected to rectify that situation by Friday, and once it is done, he will be reappointed. Until then, Rowley will serve as Minister of Public Utilities, a portfolio he held since earlier this year when he fired previous Minister Marlene MacDonald for a second time. But the opposition United National Congress, the UNC, says Le Hunt's reappointment is not an option. In a statement issued yesterday, the UNC said, quote, any attempt by the PNM to paint this gross violation of our constitution as a mistake will not be accepted, end of quote. UNC Chairman David Lee also suggested that there was another issue of concern, the lack of integrity on Le Hunt's part, since he should have disclosed his citizenship status before accepting the job. The opposition also criticized the Prime Minister for what it said was his inability to file, that is, to fill a cabinet vacancy without incident. It said it was a failure of leadership in the highest order. Meantime, Grenada's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell is getting ready to announce his fourth cabinet reshuffle since his ruling new national party, the NNP, swept all the seats in the 2013 general election. Press Secretary Keisha Alexander-Grant told reporters following a cabinet meeting on Tuesday that Mitchell will address the nation on Wednesday night. She described the pending announcement as a tweak to the cabinet portfolios but did not provide information about which ministers would be affected by the changes. Besides the cabinet changes, Grant said the Prime Minister is also expected to speak about other national issues. The Jamaica Police Federation has rejected government's 6% wage offer for the 2017-2019 period. In fact, Chairman of the Federation, Sergeant Raymond Wilson, says his group was shocked by what government put on the table. He said it only addressed one area of the Federation's 48-point wage claim, and a 6% increase over two years is unsatisfactory. 
are very shocked, we are very surprised that the government made no offer or any kind of improvement or addition on the other 47-point claim. We believe that the government either was not serious or was just not ready to negotiate with us because we do not believe what the government came with is really what they want to offer our hard-working police officers. Wilson says the Federation has given the government two weeks to make another offer. We have asked the government to go back and think about what they have brought to us and, of course, bring something that represents what our rank and file police officers truly deserve. They have asked for three weeks. We have indicated to them that three weeks may be too long, and so we are asking them to do it within two weeks in which we'll get an opportunity really and truly start the negotiation because we do not believe that what they came with yesterday was anything concerning the beginning of this negotiation. Last week, the Jamaica Teachers Association voted to reject the government's wage offer for the same 2017-2019 period. A day later, Finance Minister Audley Shaw appealed to public sector unions to be moderate in their salary demands. We stay in Jamaica where opposition leader Peter Phillips is suggesting that government's haste in pushing through legislation for the special zones of operations was unnecessary. And he says the nation continues to suffer in the absence of a, co that's a cogent and complete crime plan. We get more in this CVM News report. Dr. Peter Phillips has decried the state of crime in the nation, noting that the citizenry has been plunged into a cycle of fear and uncertainty. Compared to the worst year in the four years of the previous administration, you already have more than 200 plus murders. Additionally, this year, compared to what it was in 2015, which was the worst year. With the zones of special operations touted as a potential solution to the proliferation of violent criminality in certain communities, Dr. Phillips questions why the authorities are yet to roll out the mechanism to help stem the climbing murder rate. Because we were told that is the most urgent bit of legislation. Now when you say that I believe that you're ready for the minute it's signed to implement something with it. It's signed now almost one month. If you want to measure it in time, but if you want to measure it in lives, it's almost a hundred lives or more. And nothing done. He says the urgency with which the legislation was passed through the Parliament and Senate suggested that the state was ready to initialize the plans with immediate effect were unfounded. This would suggest that the whole passage of the law and the urgency and everything was just a face card. What is taking so long? Although I tell you, we told them, we told them that the one law is not a crime plan. It requires a whole national effort. And most of all, it requires that you don't play politics. Coming up in Caribbean Newsline, the Caribbean Court of Justice searching for a new president. We'll tell you why after the break. Government of Dominica discover Dominican authority invite the world to the most unique and indigenous celebration of Creole cultures, the World Creole Music Festival, October 27th, 28th and 29th at the Windsor Bank Sports Stadium, Rosso, Dominica, featuring Marshall Montano, Movado, Sweet Mickey, Itana, Roman Vrego, Glass, Yemi Alade, Kai, Zuko, Stas, Bungie and Fayan, Triple K International, Ace of Manton and more. Visit the DominicaFestivals.com for more information. Say Musica Nu! It's time to explore, to feel, to love. St. Kitts, everything you've ever dreamed of, and more than you could have ever imagined. It's time to follow your heart. St. Kitts. 
Welcome to SwiftPack, your online shopping and shipping solution. Receive the best rates, expert cargo management, and exceptional customer service. SwiftPack provides secure handling of your smallest packages to your largest cargo with speed and reliability. We invite you to use our U.S. mailbox service, online shopping, ship air and ocean cargo from the supplier to your door. We handle it all for you. Get started now. Sign up for a free regular account or premium account or give us a call on 440-6100. Swift back. You shop, we ship, you save. The Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ, has started the search for a new president. It announced on Tuesday that it is seeking a replacement for Sir Dennis Byron, who is set to leave office next year after heading the court for the past seven years. The tenure of a CCJ president is for a non-renewable term of seven years. The post has already been advertised. Sir Dennis says it was an honor to serve the region as the president of the Trinidad-based court, and he was particularly proud of what has been accomplished by the judges and the rest of the court's team during his tenure. It will only be a matter of days now before the Commission of Inquiry looking into an alleged plot to assassinate Guyana's President David Granger submits its report. Travis Chase of HGP Nightly News reports that the Commission will be ready by Thursday to present its findings following its inquiry into whether the police force did enough to investigate the assassination plot allegations. This revelation was made on Monday when Mr. Paul Slow, head of the Commission, spoke with Nightly News. Well, the, the report is to be, the ex extension was granted up to the 31st of this month, which is Thursday. And um, based, on what, based on the work that uh, has been done so far, the, we are going to meet that 31st deadline. We're just waiting now for the confirmation on when it is to be presented to His Excellency. The Commission, among its other terms of reference, has to report on what official action was taken by the police force after the receipt of the information and whether there was due diligence on the part of the Ghana police force officers or persons involved in the investigation and recommend actions to be taken against those found blameworthy. I was able to get witnesses and um, to give evidence in relation to the terms of reference. You know, everything um, hinged around being able to answer to the terms of reference. There were eight terms of reference for the um, commission and the evidence that um, came out um, allowed me to answer each and every one which I have done. It was opposition leader Barra Jack Deal who said the commission of inquiry headed by SLO is demoralizing to the Guyana police force and that the commission of inquiry brings into question the entire leadership of the force. Would you respond to allegations that the commission has been unfair and unjust? Well, um, the, the, the old question is the evidence came out and it's based on the evidence. The Commission wasn't able or could not adjust the evidence. The, co the Commission cannot change the statements or the facts that came out. So the, you have to go on the facts, the evidence given by the witnesses and the circumstances surrounding the whole um, allegation and the investigation as we were required to do by the terms of reference. Political unrest in Guatemala is causing some concern for Belize. Questions have been raised about whether the CARICOM nation should step up its security presence along the western border. Foreign Minister Wilfred Erlinton says that was his inclination all along. But he says it doesn't mean that Belize's security force should take on a confrontational approach. Erlinton says Belize must be extremely conscious of its relationship with its neighbor since the territorial dispute could be used as a smoke screen to distract Guatemalans from internal conflicts. Whenever you have these occurrences in our region, particularly in Guatemala, it gives me great concern. I will confess that. I think we need to be studious and careful as to how we operate now with the Guatemalans because when they have internal conflicts, they tend to look for scapegoat. And Belize has got to be super careful to ensure that no attention is turned to us while they are going through their own internal problems. Elrington was asked what the present state of affairs signifies for the recently approved referendum process in Guatemala. His response was one of uncertainty. Well, we don't know. We would hope that it would not derail the process, but that could happen. 
Anything is possible. We don't know. We are hoping for the best, but we don't know. That's the honest response. Treatment as prevention. That's the new strategy of regional and international experts on the treatment of HIV and AIDS in the Caribbean. The objective is to put the region on track to end the AIDS epidemic. This week, the Caribbean Cytometry and Analytical Society is meeting to discuss the strategy under the theme From Care to Cure, Shifting the HIV Paradigm. Addressing the meeting, the Society's chairman, Professor Clive Landis, said the world health research sector is on the brink of eliminating AIDS as an epidemic, but there is a huge gap between what the public knows and what the experts know. It is just not possible for the public to make rational decisions in an, inter in an information vacuum. Fundamentally, the public is still terrified of this disease and see it as a death sentence. We have to challenge such misconceptions and address the rational concerns among the public. Why should I know my status? What's the point of getting tested if I will just be handed a death sentence? And the fear in my heart is also driving the stigmatizing attitudes towards persons infected with HIV of whom I am afraid. We can and we must turn these attitudes around. The public needs to know the amazing medical treatments that eliminate AIDS the moment someone with HIV goes on treatment. UNAIDS Director for Latin America and the Caribbean, Dr. Cesar Nunez, noted that through the 2016 political declaration on ending AIDS, United Nations member states have agreed to adopt a fast-track strategy that involves increasing prevention, testing and treatment services while working to eliminate stigma and discrimination. Central to this goal are the 1990-90 treatment targets, which are 90% of people living with HIV knowing their status, 90% of diagnosed people on treatment and 90% of people on treatment with an undetectable viral load. But Dr. Nunes says the ability of regional countries to achieve these targets will depend on the success of their work with partners, including civil society, to remove barriers and stigmatization. The dimension of our challenge is understanding why people continue to get diagnosed late or die due to AIDS-related causes when testing and treatment services are available. Our reality is that the potential impact of game change in scientific advances is being undermined by ignorance, fear, shame, prejudice, and exclusion. Dr. Nunes calls for partnership to conduct more research on Caribbean HIV epidemics, including epidemiological surveillance, seroprevalence, and key population studies. And ahead in New Zealand sport, a historic win for West Indies in their three test series against England. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with diabetes? If so, it is important that you know about Glucerna. Glucerna is a nutritional supplement for people with diabetes and contains carb steady, which helps minimize blood sugar spikes. Manage your diabetes with Glucerna. Glucerna, nutrition for people with diabetes, designed for you. Boy, you went through a hell of a time, didn't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Bring us back to that day when you were, you were told to go clean up uh, on the ground above a, below a scaffold, right? Yeah. Um, what happened? What do you remember from it? What I remember is I was starting to work, and the foreman told me to bend down and clean up the debris that was under the scaffold. So I yeah. started cleaning up the debris to throw it out into the dumpster. So while I'm doing it, I'm bending over because everything is low. How do you see this going forward? In so many things, and the diaspora is no exception. We do, do suffer somewhat from a implementation deficit. And uh, I think there is now a full-fledged department dealing with that.
A century from Shea Hope guided the West Indies to a historic five-wicket victory against England at Headingley on Tuesday. The Barbadian put on a match-alerting 144-run partnership with Craig Brathwaite, a stand that ultimately helped to secure the West Indies' first victory in England since June 2000. Unbeaten on 11 at lunch, Hope played delightfully on resumption, combining a series of beautiful offside drives and leg side strokes as he ma marched to his half-century in the first hour. He fashioned a superb unbeaten 118 to spearhead the run chase while opener Craig Brathwaite struck an excellent 95 with his second century of the game in sight. Brathwaite perished in the penultimate over before T caught at slip driving lazily at Ali to raise England's hopes of a late comeback. Jermaine Blackwood chipped in with a typical attacking 41 of 45 balls which further embellished the innings while Roston Chase carved out 30 to also lend support. England found their much vaunted team seam attack blunted and right arm spinner Moeen Ali was the best bowler with two for 76. After the match a relieved captain Jason Holder commended his men for their performance. No, it feels really good you know um, especially after the game in Edgbaston you know it was a tough loss and you know a lot of teams would have crumbled you know, coming back into the second test match and and probably not giving England the fight that we that we gave them. Um, yeah, I just want to say credit to every single member of this this team. You know, um, I said at the beginning of the test match that I bat this, these guys to, to rebound. And, you know, no better way to do it. You know, outstanding effort here by Shea as well as Craig. Thought they they led the batting tremendously in this entire game. And each and every bowler, I just can't really fault them. You know, everybody came up and gave an effort throughout the entire test match. And it didn't always go away in terms of the chances we missed, but. It didn't deter any bowler from coming in and, and keep giving an effort, and that's why I really asked for everyone. Holder says the team worked hard to ensure they didn't suffer the same fate as in Egberston when they were dealt an innings defeat. It did something, you know, we had plenty of time to reflect, you know, being bidden in three days. Um, each and every member of the team felt it, you know, we were really hard on ourselves, you know, but it wasn't a situation where we could panic. It was just a, a, a time for us to find solutions. Uh, we sat down as a team. And we had a really, really good meeting after the, the Edgbaston Test match, and I felt from there, you know, I could see um, most of the guys understand a lot more about what was required of them and, and and where we needed to be in terms of coming into this Test match and performing. And as I said, credit must quote everybody. You know, everybody put their hands up. I don't think there's a question of us not working hard. You know, we work really hard behind the scenes, and I don't think anybody shirks the the, the work or or what's required from them. So. To come and all the preparation you know, pays off, and you know, I feel really, really good. To football now, Trinidad and Tobago's under 17 national team advanced to the next round of the CFU World Cup qualifiers after a draw with Grenada. Ruskin Mark of Sea Sport has that story. The battle between the two top teams in the group, so something had to give. And from the off, TNT went for the opener, but they couldn't get it done. Grenada were also gifted a golden opportunity to open the scoring, but just couldn't get that definitive touch to seize the chance. Still, the home team pressed and came close on a number of occasions, like in this sequence, where they had two bites at the cherry, but they were denied each time. Still, TNT pushed forward and had another good look at goal, only for Afia Cornwall to look on in agony as a shot was saved onto the bar. Then, with the half-time whistle approaching, the unthinkable happened as TNT hit through their own goal for one to nothing to the visitors at the interval. It was more of the same in the second half as TNT opened brightly but still had nothing to show for their enterprise. But the Grenadians, who were together for the last two years now, almost double up, but the effort is blocked and the loose ball is then prevented from crossing the line, close but not close enough. Then TNT will draw level in a real scramble as the corner is allowed to bounce around near the goal line and eventually, according to the referee and her assistant, they ruled that the ball had crossed the line for the equalizing goal. Then TNT would take the lead for the first time in the game when the speedy Maria Frances Sarant outruns the defense and places a shot away from the keeper for 2-1 now TNT. But Grenada was handed a lifeline when a penalty as correctly awarded here for this crunching tackle by the keeper. Up step skipper Judy McIntosh to bury the spot kick and hand Grenada a share of the spoils. 
with the draw, Chianti finishes as group leaders by virtue of a superior goal difference, allowing them to join Puerto Rico from Group B, Bermuda from Group C, Cuba from Group D, and Jamaica from Group E in the next round in Haiti in October. Switching sports, Barbadian tennis star Darian King says he was happy to play against Germany number four seed Alexander Zverev, despite missing out on a chance to move on to the next round of the primetime U.S. Open. King went down to Alexander 7-6-7-5-6-4 in a match that did not end until a little past 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. King was the first player from Barbados to compete in the singles main draw of a major tournament. The number 168 seed says he was very pleased to be on the biggest court in tennis during the night session. And he said it was his dream to be playing among some of the best players in the world. King has been a professional tennis player since 2010 and is now setting sights on playing against Venezuela in the upcoming Davis Cup in Barbados. And that's the spot. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with diabetes? If so, it is important that you know about Glucerna. Glucerna is a nutritional supplement for people with diabetes and contains Carb Steady, which helps minimize blood sugar spikes. Manage your diabetes with Glucerna. Glucerna, nutrition for people with diabetes, designed for you. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. Again, the major developments of this day, former Trinidad and Tobago Attorney General Anand Ram Logan detained by police on allegations of witness tampering. And in sport, West Indies record their first victory in England in 17 years after being the host for five wickets in the second test of their three-match series. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to carnanews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching. Do have yourselves a good night.